Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Thinking Project. That 800-pound gorilla in the room is my voice sounds horrible. So I'm fighting a cough. I'm fighting a cold, excuse me, uh, this past week. So that's why my voice is kind of crazy. But in the actual podcast, it sounds a lot better. This podcast was recorded a while ago. Um, so before I get into introducing the guest, I would love for you to join the Discord group where all of my listeners join and we have a great time networking and putting together activities and uh, and just really helping out the community, building a community there. Um, the second thing is, is if you're really into sales, I do have my sales training group. I have my Discord group that we exchange ideas and help each other out in that sales world. So if that's something you're interested in, please, please check out those descriptions below. And with all that being said, let me introduce Taylor Proctor, who is a confidence and marketing coach and content creation coach. She's all of those things. She has a book club that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so you can check that out. That link will be in the description below as well. We talked about all things about mainly about how to create confidence in your business and how to create confidence in yourself enough to get out there and do what you've always wanted to do. Start a business, make that extra money, uh, whatever you're going to do with your new found confidence. After you listen to this episode, please let me know. Go find me on YouTube, make a comment on this video, find me on LinkedIn, tell me all about it. So with all that being said, and without further ado, Taylor Proctor, and let's jump into the episode. Welcome, Taylor. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I'm so honored and delighted to be able to <laughs> chat with you tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, we met through Facebook, um, but I've seen your podcast around. I've seen a lot of your posts around. Um, it seems like you have a ton going on, but I'd love to hear in like your words, everything you have going on and, and what, and what your life looks like. <laughs> sure. So, uh, I love that you asked this question because my life just looks kind of crazy. I think from the <laughs> outside, uh, so to see social media posts, you're probably like, what exactly? Like, it's just all these things, <laughs> but, uh, ultimately everything I do cites back to this idea of confidence. So I am a consultant and a coach. And so I coach other coaches to really step into their confidence in who they are to show up authentically and in their marketing and in their business strategy. But I also consult uh, startups and mid-sized businesses in building their business, having confidence in their culture, having confidence in their organizational structure, in their ability to scale, to unify as a team and to uh, essentially grow and have confidence in their marketing strategies and structures as well. So that's kind of at the highest level. What I do is I help people feel more confident, whether it's in themselves, in their business, in their marketing, in their ability to lead teams, et cetera. But yeah, that's, that's the high level version of it. <laughs> cool. Well, okay. So confidence is a big topic. Yeah. Um, something that I've like, as, as a sales, you know, like a, as a sales professional and like a sales uh, trainer, something that I that gets brought up a ton because like confidence in what you do, confidence in your product really helps the deliverability of a pitch. But before we get into all of that, I want to know how you got started. So is this something like being a coach in the confidence industry in this kind of way and a consultant, a business consultant, is this something that you had your eyes on for a long time or is this something that kind of came about as you took opportunities or, or what, what does that look like? Yeah. So the journey is actually quite interesting. Uh, I was a marketing exec, uh, just left actually about 90 days ago, a VP of marketing position for a company out of Las Vegas. And for over 14 years, I've been a corporate leader and marketing exec. And so I've built teams and departments from the ground up and found that I really loved the setting of cultural tone. I loved the organizational structure. I loved being able to coach my team members into their best for professional development. And all of that was done with a marketing slant to it because I have a marketing background and emphasis in content and social media marketing specifically. And so that was like the, I found that to be like the perfect blend of everything that I do. And for about four years, I think we're actually coming on five. I have been certified as transformational happiness mentor. So while doing all of my corporate careers and things like that, I also had a side business where I was doing one-on-one -on -one happiness mentoring and helping my clients find happiness habits. And what I ended up finding was, is that I would work with clients that 
we would get their happiness in, I'm going to say in check, right? They were like, I have everything. I have a successful business. I have the great spouse. I have wonderful kids. I have all the toys. I have the money. I have everything that's on this societal checklist and I'm not happy. And so we'd work to define and build happiness habits for them. And essentially what would happen is after our time working together, their life, I had a scale, it was like a one to 10 scale. And they would start usually on a two or a three. And by the time we finished working together in a 10 week period, they'd be at a seven, eight or nine consistently. I have clients that I worked with three years ago and they still talk to me and like, yep, I'm an eight on the scale, like consistently, which is amazing. But what they would find is, okay, I've got all this stuff together. I feel great. I love my life. I still have a successful business, but I feel like I could do more in my business. Can you help with that? And I'm like, actually, I have a double life where <laughs> I'm this transformational happiness mentor as my side gig. And I am doing marketing and leadership and operations and business strategy in the corporate world. So about, like I said, a little bit over 90 days ago, I actually finally made the leap to go full-time into my business and it's taken off and been amazing and being able to help consult. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a acting president and the CMO for a startup social media company called Pivot. I am also helping a company that's a mid-sized organization has been in business to, for 12 years and wants to take it to the next level. And so they want help with their marketing and operations there. And then I have my coaches that I coach and help them step into their confidence and their authenticity. And it's just been an amazing ride that all started with, I didn't really do that but I had yeah. to find my own confidence in those areas. And I found that I was helping other people feel more confident in those areas. And it just kind of became a catalyst for this is what I get to help people do. And you kind of touched on it too, where in sales, in, in anything, confidence is such a huge piece of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we live in a space now where people lack self-trust and that really impacts their ability to go after their dreams, to go after what they want. And I think confidence is the key to everything. So I'm just honored to be able to help people do that. <laughs> yeah. Confidence is the key, right? Like, um, but there's a lot to unpack kind of in your story. So yes. when you, so you said um, you kind of started in like the, the marketing world and mm -hmm. then kind of bounced into like confidence coaching, what, what, what moved you into like marketing? So, uh, well, what moved me into marketing? Uh, <laughs> so years and years and years ago, uh, over 14 now, I ran my own wedding planning business oh. and I loved the wedding planning piece of it. I had great clients. I loved working with other vendors. I loved all those components, but I ended up moving towns. So I ended up moving from St. George, Utah, which at the time was oh, yeah. a small little town. Now, oh, yeah, it's not small anymore, <laughs> not small anymore, but it was a small town. There was like three of us that were like the main wedding planners for the, for the area. And I ended up moving back up to salt Lake, which is where I'm from. So salt Lake city, Utah. And I kind of had a moment of, do I want to continue doing my wedding planning business? Because I'm starting from scratch. It's a whole new area, whole mm -hmm. new geographic area. So you have to make new vendor relationships. You have to make, understand new venues, like all of that. And I kind of sat on it for a second and went, I loved working with my clients, but the thing I loved most was testing and playing and marketing my actual business. So I went and got a job as a copywriter that became a content strategist, yeah. which became content SEO, social media manager, which became assistant director of multi-channel campaigns, <laughs> which I mean, it just, it goes, it goes, it goes, yeah, it goes, yeah, it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, a lot of growth in that, in that industry. Absolutely. And what it ended up being was I ended up moving into a position where I was the senior director of operations and culture for a brand love program. Mm -hmm. And I worked with a lot of team members who it was their first job out of college or is their first job in like a corporate and marketing tech type of space. And the thing that inhibited them the most from doing their best job was they lacked confidence in their skills. And so I started to help coach and train them in our one-on-ones and like, Hey, well, what if we did this? And like coaching them to really value themselves and value their skills and being good at their job. Mm -hmm. And that combined with, in conjunction, doing my mentoring on the side and seeing the confidence that people would have once they felt happier, it all just kind of came together. And about a year ago, I transitioned from happiness mentoring to 
the marketing and confidence side and business strategy side, because it was really the blend of all of it. When you're mm-hmm. happier in your life, you can get more confident. So I'm helping people do that. <laughs> and when you are confident in your marketing, your message, your mission, your vision of your business, your business can scale and you can market it and connect with the ideal and correct clients and really grow. Mm, I like that. Okay. Well now let's dive in. I love your story. I think it's interesting because it resonates with a lot of people because when I talk with my listeners outside of this, like I have a group and things like that. It just, it's very powerful to hear somebody who came from something totally different and, and reinvented themselves into a different industry. Right. Or like just, you know, you can find ways that what you're doing now, like there's a lot of things that you're doing now that could turn into businesses that actually make you happy, that actually make you money. Right. Um, So I love that part of the story. And this is where like, you know, a nice transition into like, what now, like what you actually do, like, how do you start to build confidence and happiness? Because happiness is a happiness is a buzzword. And you mentioned another buzzword, like culture, right? And so I've had Mm -hmm. a lot of people on where we talk about like this, like another buzzword in the business world is like value, right? Like, we have a lot of these words that just get thrown around, and they're nice to hear. But like, what do you actually mean? And how do you actually make that into what you do. So like, for example, like happiness, right? So I read one of my favorite books is um, the happiness trap. Mm. And it's, it talks about, well, and it it doesn't necessarily talk about like, it's more of like a, like a stoic definition of maybe happiness, which is like the acceptance commitment, you know what I mean? And things like that. But I'm just curious, like, how would you define happiness? Like, what does it mean? I mean, I, I understand that it looks different for everybody, but there must be some kind of like vision in your head to like, this is where we need to get to. And that path might look different for this person, but here's the idea. Actually, I love that you, you bring that up because I do truly believe that happiness is so different for everybody. And one of the biggest hindrances that I see in any type of coaching is that there's this almost this dictation of, it has to look like this for you to be successful. And Mm. that is not always the case, right? So if we see it in, in marketing, it's like, I did this and got six figures. So if you do this, you should get six figures. And if they do it and it doesn't work for them, then it brings you down even more because you're like, well, what's wrong with me? Why didn't that work? Right. There's a lot of like self gaslighting. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yes. And so yeah. that's one of the things I'm very conscious of and very weary of is I don't want to say this is what happiness is, because if that's not what it looks like for you, there's that gas line that can happen. That being mm. said, happiness for me <laughs> sure, sure. and what that looks like. And I help my clients find what it looks like for them. Sure. And we can go into that. There's a whole lot of permission-based type of things that have to happen to be able mm. to really discover what happiness means for you. But yeah. for me, happiness is, this is going to be a weird thing to say in a weird mix of words, but happiness for me is peace and autonomy. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to feel at peace in my, in my day-to-day life, at peace with my decisions, at peace mm-hmm. with trusting that things are going to work out and be okay. And I want the autonomy in my life to be able to take those, take those actions, make those decisions and be able to work with the people around me, to work with the businesses that I work with, to work with my partner, like all of those types of things to like really step in and be my ultimate self. And in that ultimate self, be like my best self, my most authentic self. And frankly, my most confident self. <laughs> yeah. I like that though. And, and you said a couple of words there because whenever I get like, I don't know, and it doesn't happen a lot. Cause I don't know. I just, I'm not in that realm, but every once in a while, happiness gets brought up. Right. And for me, mm-hmm. I think what a lot of people, and you brought it up, like in your definition, right? Like, I think a lot of people confuse happiness for like peace. Right. Because in my mind, like, like I said, I kind of brought up like that. I have a lot of stoic viewpoints, like, cause I, I learned about stoicism before it was like mainstream and popular. Right. But like the, the, you know what I mean? Like the idea, the idea is though, that like happiness to me is like, uh, that's not my goal. My goal is like what you said. It's like peace because I can be peaceful in turbulent times. I can be peaceful when, when during the storms of life that might not be the happiest moments, but I can definitely find some, I can still have clarity. I can still have peace. And uh, I feel like 
you know, when we're talking about this and how you're helping people find their happiness and their confidence, it's kind of like that, the momentum, right? It's kind of like a, you know, like a snowball effect, right? That, it, you know, is like momentum carries itself. And so like happiness and confidence just kind of like are, are generated with, with momentum, right? But like for you, like when you're talking with clients, there must be like some signs that you are happy, right? Because in my mind, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Like if you came up to me and like, you could ask me what happiness was, but like, if you came up to maybe somebody who didn't know, it's kind of like, you don't know what you don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm happy or not, or I don't know what that looks like when I get there. So for, are there signs that you teach people to maybe look for? Yeah, I think one of the first things I look for is if you, and I mentioned a scale earlier, right? A yeah. one to 10 scale. And people that rank on the two to three of that are still very hopeful, but know that something doesn't feel quite right. And what I look for is when someone says to me, I just have everything and I'm just not happy. Mm. That's usually an indicator that the next question I ask is, do you think that happiness is inherent? And for a lot of folks, they will say, well, yeah, like I'm a human being, I'm supposed to be happy. It's natural. And so something's wrong with me if I don't feel happy. And the truth of it is, is that happiness is a skill. Happiness is not inherent. Happiness is a skill. And so from that point, if we're able to shift the mindset from, yes, we can naturally be a happy person or or whatever, but if you want to feel consistently and remind me to come back (laughs) to this part, right? You want to feel happy consistently. Yeah. then you have to take action and build those habits and you can learn that skill and be happier long-term in your life. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the tipping point that I look for. And I ask is, what do you believe about happiness? And if there's a desire to shift or change that, then we can definitely make that transition. But mm-hmm. additionally, there's a lot of points going on in my head right now. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. now I feel like I really have to say this stuff because I don't want everyone to Go think for you it. have to be happy all the time. Sure, right? sure, sure, so sure, sure. I'm a human being. 50% of my emotions are going to be negative. That's just how it is. Mm-hmm. But I like to view it like it's a pendulum, right? So like, you know, those, they used to have them on the desk. I don't know what they're called, <laughs> but they had, they like had the metal ball. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I don't know what they're called, but yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got it, that vision in their mind. Yeah. So it's like that you have a pendulum of emotions as a human being. And what most people do is they live on what I'm going to deem the negative air quotes around that. Cause not everything is negative, but <laughs> sure. the negative side of the pendulum, right? So it's like, I'm just swinging a little bit happy over here on my negative side of the pendulum. And then, Oh, I got a promotion. Bing. I go up to the positive side. I stay there for a couple of days, a week, maybe. And I come back. Right. And so you're living on this more yeah. downer side of the pendulum and looking for those highlight moments. Oh, I got married. Oh, I got, I had a baby. I got a promotion. Mm -hmm. I just had a nice day. Right. But like, it's just little teeny pings, but we're living on this more downer side Mm -hmm. through happiness habits reverses. So you're happier in your life. You're spending more time on that higher level of that pendulum. So you're hanging out here and occasionally something will happen. We're humans. This is life, (laughs) right? Something will happen and you'll ping down to the negative side but you'll have the tools to be able to get yourself back up to the positive side, to continue growing, to continue feeling better and more positive in your life. So that's, and there's tools and techniques to get you there, but essentially it's like, we're living in most of us live in this negative side with this hopeful ping to the positive. Whereas what if we lived in the positive and we had the tools when we do ping, because we will, when we do ping to the ne- more negative side that we can come back and more consistently live our life in this positive side, which yeah. then brings me to the second thing that I'm like, I have to be able to say this <laughs> is with happiness as a skill. This is the, the formula at a very, very high level, the formula that will get you there. Okay. And that's action. Action leads to starting to feel like you're actually, um, it's you're actually qualified, right? So you take Mm -hmm. action and over repeated amounts of action, you start to feel actually qualified to do something, right? Mm -hmm. So podcasting, for example, right? If you've never podcasted before, you've got to do 20 podcasts before you start to feel like maybe I could actually do podcasting, (laughs) right? Sure, or more. Exactly. So it's taking action and that leads you to feel like you're qualified. Once you feel like you're qualified, then you start to actually feel like you are 
capable, mm. right? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm qualified and I'm capable of doing this. And then once you feel like you're capable, you can step into confidence. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. The process there is starts with action every single time. Yep. That makes sense. And you, that kind of breaks it down a little further into what I've always taught confidence, right? Cause I'm, I like train salespeople and that's a big deal. Um, because you can, I can normally pinpoint like why someone won't ask or say something mm-hmm. or, or do something because they just, you know, it's usually like a, yeah, it's a confidence issue. And usually for me, that also leads to then like an experience issue. Right. So, um, my, my little tag phrase, and I didn't invent this. I got it from somebody. I can't remember who I got it from, but, uh, cause it's been probably like 10 years since I, since I learned it, but like competence breeds confidence. Yep. So like, that's what I teach. So I'm like, if you're competent, meaning like you have the experience, you know what you're doing, you've been there before, right? You can have a lot of confidence. Um, you can have a lot of confidence in what you're doing. Yep. Um, and uh, sorry, give me just one second. Yeah. I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. I'll cut everything. Okay. But yeah, well, yeah. So I'll cut this part out, but my, uh, my wife's aunt passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, we kind of knew. Um, but anyway, her husband, my uncle just asked me to be a pallbearer. So I was like, got to respond to that kind of quick. Anyway, um, what were we, what were we talking about? So we were talking about, um, it wasn't competency, yeah, 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 or yeah, capability, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Capability. So, so your capability process, brings c- confidence. Capability brings confidence. Yeah. Your, your, um, definition is a lot better than mine. Cause like me trying to explain this, like competent brings co- confidence. And they're like, all right, well, how do I become competent? And for me, it's kind of like, that's what, that's what this whole thing is. Right. Right. Like, so you go to training, we, we just start doing stuff. Right. Because I like how you said just action, because that's the first thing that I would tell salespeople is like, we well, just got to start doing it. You know what I mean? Like be okay. Like, you know, like one of my favorite quotes, like probably the quote of my life is done is better than perfect. Oh, like, absolutely. You know what I mean? And so like, how do you build? So, so somebody was like, how do you build your competence? I'm like, well, you just do it. Like done is better than perfect. You know what I mean? And I, and I, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of w- women salespeople and they're fantastic, but I've, you know, just because of the industries that I've been in, I've worked with more men than women. Um, and so I, you know, I just tell them, I just be like, get your ass out there start, start failing. You know what I mean? Cause then we'll start like, you know, because sales is so nuanced that like, I can't go over every conceivable possibility, Option, right? Yep. You just have to like get out there um, and start working. So I love that you brought up action. I love that you brought up feeling qualified and, and capabilities because that's, that's a big, that's a big piece of, of what people need in, as far as confidence goes. Right? Absolutely. And one of the things all my clients have probably heard me say this about 30 times, (laughs) but my favorite phrase, uh, in terms of like the, just getting out there, get it done. It's progress is better than perfection type of thing is it's good enough for government work. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, I'm not anti-government or anything, but like, if you look at stuff and projects and how long they may take, or you're like, did they really just do this? Like it's finished. How is this finished? It's like halfway done. And it's just like, it's good enough for government work. It's good enough for me. Like, let's go. And I'm not saying (laughs) like, don't try to do a good job, but ultimately it's like, you can sit here forever Right. Or you can take action and actually get messy and do the work. And it's right. going to be good enough for government work. Like millions of people <laughs> use it. Millions of people love it. Like it's good enough for yeah. government work. Just go in, get it done. I love that because I, there was a, fr- so when I started my first e-commerce company selling CBD, um, I was doing a lot of research and I came across this quote from a famous like e-commerce, you know, uh, founder. And she said, if your product is perfect, you launch too late. Oh, Absolutely. And I was like, dang, because have you ever seen some of like the very first products, like think about like the first iPhone, mm-hmm. like you couldn't get away with releasing that today ever. Right. But like they didn't though. And that was the point was like, we got, we got out our product. We're going to start building. And now, you know, however many years later, 20 years later, or whatever, you know, they're here. Right. And uh, yeah. it, it, that's just part of it though. It's like, you have to just, and that's why I kind of say like peace is, is how I would define it similar to you as far as happiness goes, because like, dude, 
for me, it's like, I tell people like, you're going to fail, like stop thinking yeah. that. And, and so I actually, because of like my, my studies in like philosophy, I actually changed that word. Like, I don't believe in failure, but I do believe in losing. Right. And I feel like there's a difference in my, in my mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel like you really fail, but I do feel like, like, I don't feel like, um, failure is the same as losing. Like, I feel like losing is healthy. Right? like, that's why, like, I do, I, I put my kid, put my daughter in jujitsu so that she can mm -hmm. learn how to lose and she can learn how to win. Right. But that's not failing. Like losing is not failing, but you know, losing is good. Failing for has, <laughs> failing feels like it has a finality to it. Whereas losing yeah, is yeah. I can compete tomorrow. Yeah. 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 I love, I love that. I love that because, and, and so in my life, like, but, and, and, so I try to remove like arbitrary labels to mm. things. So like failure, like good or bad, like th those are all arbitrary definitions of things that don't need them, right? Like is yep. losing good or bad? Like, I don't know. Is winning good or bad? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> like, I love that. Be, right. I love that. Cause I teach that. That is one of the, so I have a six week course where it's mm -hmm. called the content cure, where I help coaches and small business owners, like cure their content, right. To be able to do a content marketing strategy, to be able to market their business. The very, very first thing that we talk about is iteration mm. and iteration is yeah. right. And I literally in the module, I tell the story of iPhone and I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> look, like your iPhone now is an iPhone 13 or 14 or whatever it is, whatever they're on now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, but that, that would not exist. And it would not be the tool that you are on 20 million times. Mm times a day, right? It would not be that tool if they hadn't ever produced the first one mm -hmm. and then iterated and iterated and iterated and got it to yeah. the point that it is now. And they're still iterating. And so but, when you give yourself permission to iterate, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just saying, um, you know, you can finish. I'll keep my thought though. Okay. Well, so like when you give yourself permission to iterate now you can have fun right? It doesn't have to be, oh, I, I might've said the wrong thing. And now my marketing's all ruined, or I have to be perfect, or I can't, I can't sell this course until it's completely finished. Well, you have to put something out there and then get the market reaction, see what your clients actually need and iterate and mm -hmm. the permission to iterate. Cause I mentioned earlier, confidence and permission go hand in hand, mm -hmm. right? That permission to be yourself, but also permission to iterate, permission to grow, permission to change, permission to we're going to say lose, right? Mm -hmm. Permission yeah. to do that and to continue to pivot and iterate, pivot and iterate. Mm -hmm. That is what is the difference between people who are unhappy and people who are happier, <laughs> but also like ultimately the difference between successful business owners and those who are just hobbyists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so I was before I like before I changed the flow of my podcast to more of a how to thing, mm -hmm. um, I had done. 215 220 episodes before I was like oh dude this is how you do it <laughs> like you for have real, to take I, action and you have to be willing to iterate yeah and you just like keep going and you're like all right so I'm an entrepreneur in business that's a really tough category to be in with mm -hmm. the Gary V's and the Tony Robbins of the world in in there right so I'm like where can I find my voice and it was like in the education how to which by the way crazy enough full circle like when I was young, I was like, I want to be a teacher. And my mom said, you couldn't make any money teaching. So I threw that idea out the window. Mm. But then we live in 2022, where like every, you know, you can be coaches and you can be consultants. Like, but I grew up in a small farming town. Like when I tell the story of like how I got into sales in, when I was in high school, they do the how to, they do the uh, most likely to awards. Mm -hmm. Right. My, my, my little town, 10,000 people, factories and farming, small town in Iowa. I won, like, I would always sell stuff, but they gave me the most likely to be a con artist award because <laughs> they didn't know what, they didn't know what a salesperson was. Right. <laughs> right. They just thought like cons. And so it's just wild how you just find things, right? Like things just come as you start moving and you start taking opportunities and you, you set out goals for your life and what that wants to look like. And, and then you're okay with like your goals changing. Right. Like, totally. I don't think there's a, like, there's a lot of stigma in the hustle culture of like, don't change your goals, change the effort. And I'm like, well, dude, if you don't want to pay the price, you can change the goal. Like, <laughs> well, sometimes it's not even about paying the price. Sometimes it's yeah. about 
the goal that a good example is, so like I said, I started with transformational happiness mentoring for my business. Mm -hmm. I now have, I'm going to say rebranded it. The logo yeah. behind me used to say happiness abound. That was the name of my company. Now it's just Taylor Proctor international, Yeah. but there was a shift there because yeah. I was helping people with happiness, but I had this whole other part. It felt like a secret identity of like, oh yeah, I actually am pretty solid at helping you in your business and helping with leadership and helping with confidence, like all of these pieces <laughs> and the marketing. And so it was like this, almost like a dual life. And when I could bring them together, I had to iterate my business. Mm -hmm. I had to make a change. I had to pivot when I brought them together, even while I was still working full-time again, it was a side gig for forever. Sure. Once I changed, so I did it as a side gig for remaining another year while I still did corporate and I made more money and helped. This is the most important part, helped mm -hmm. more people in the one year that I had transitioned it to what felt more aligned for me to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Then I did the entire three years previous mm -hmm. as the happiness mentor. Yep. And so what I wanted to be was the happiness mentor. I had goals. It was great. And as I grew and shifted and stepped more into me and was willing to like have yeah. identity shifts, my business needed to shift too. And if it hadn't, mm. I would just been like, I have to do this. I have to do this. And it would have been so yeah. misaligned that there's no opportunity for it to be successful. Right. And I think that's so important is like you change and grow as a person every minute of the day your business can do the same or your creative projects can do the same. And they're yeah. a living, breathing thing. And they're a piece of you. You're constantly <laughs> growing. Your business should do. Yeah, I think. Well, and that's what I meant by like paying the price. Like, because if you, if you keep doing the same things, even though you can feel the shift in the energy or you feel the shift in the business, right? Like that's a hard, that's a hard price to pay, like not being willing oh, yeah. to iterate. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So like, oh, yeah you know, and, and, and what's funny is like, I learned this phrase from a, he wouldn't call himself a philosopher, but I would. Um, and it's just like, it's not how bad do you want? It's like, what are you willing to suffer to get it? And mm. he, and you know what I mean? And, and so like that changed my whole perspective. And that's why I'm, a, that's why I'm okay. Like iterating right away or like changing right away, because it's like, I don't want to suffer. And, and, and then there's a, the whole philosophical thesis behind suffering but just for this right like right. so you know so I, I didn't want to suffer doing the same things that I know didn't work when, when I could just change and suffer like the growing pains again right like I heard once like the difference between a, a you know a, a good entrepreneur and a great entrepreneur is their willingness to go back to zero and start over yeah you know, and, but, but you know what else too, like my podcast as an example, or, or I'm sure you've done this, you know, and, and you have done this, you just told the story of this in your business, but it's like, it doesn't feel like starting over because you have all the knowledge yeah. again. Well, and that's why I love the word iteration. Yeah. Because iteration is everything that you have learned, you have a foundation to grow and shift from. Yeah. If we look at it, like it's starting over, then you feel like, and I can't remember the exact term. It's not loss leader, but I'm going to use loss leader where sure. it's like, you're, you have this vested interest. And so you're like, I've been, I've gone to school to be a lawyer for eight years. And now I don't want to be a lawyer, but I put so much vested interest. I, it was a loss <laughs> for me. Like I put in so much time, so much money, so much effort, so much education, so much everything. I sacrificed mm -hmm. all of these things that I just going to go for it because I've put so much in and that's not great either. Oh yeah. Right. That's the, uh, that's the sunken cost fallacy. That's yeah. I was like, it's not loss uh -huh. leader. What is it? Yeah. Sunken <laughs> yeah. cost. Yeah. Sunken cost. And so there's that component too, where it's like, ultimately, what are you willing yeah. to sacrifice? Are you sac whether, and I can speak to this too, because I just left corporate, right? For a year and a half before leaving corporate, I knew I should have left corporate. Mm, yeah. And I, I stuck with it because I was like, I've been in this industry. I've been doing this for 14 years. I have a reputation. I I'm, I'm good at what I do. I also had the, I don't want to leave my team. I love helping my team. And yeah. I also had the, the money is phenomenal. <laughs> sure, I don't yeah. want to lose that. Right. You mean 14 years to be in an executive yeah. career? Like it's not, yeah, what is that? What is that called? Golden handcuffs? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so, but at, at that point to lean into what you were saying, yeah. the sacrifice was my health. The mm -hmm. sacrifice was my emotional capacity. I, I would be, I would work 
and I would come home or I would log off because we've done remote for the last little while. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would be so exhausted and I would have a headache every day. I ate. So I did 75 hard in 20, from 2019 to 2020, 2020. Mm -hmm. And so I did the full year, 75 years, 75 hard. So all the phases and stuff. And I lost like 30 pounds. Cool. Well, <laughs> knowing I'm not supposed to be in corporate, right. I was eating my emotions. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't love it. And so I would eat in two forms. I would eat. So I wouldn't feel, so I could numb out how terrible this was, even though it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It just wasn't the right fit for me anymore. Mm -hmm. And additionally to that, I would eat to procrastinate. Oh, if I'm just going to eat this snack and take a 20 minute break, and then I'll work on that spreadsheet and then right. I'll do this and I would eat all day long. So I gained 30 pounds back. Yeah. 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 I mean, and it's, it's really like, easy. Yeah. Yeah. Really easy. And so it's like, what's the sacrifice mm -hmm. here? I am saying, okay, it's great money. I've put all this time into it. It's that sunken cost and it's my life is good otherwise, but I can't enjoy my life. If I have headaches, I'm exhausted all the time. I mean, right. I can enjoy my life if I'm overweight, but not if I'm like, I was fantastic. And now I'm like, Oh man, yeah, I feel yeah, so yeah. sluggish. Right. right. There's well, a, still a sacrifice either way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I understand what you're saying. Like, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, but I hear, you know, it's just like the whole, I don't know, like I'm, I'm big, like I'm a big guy. I'm like six foot, like 280. Uh, so I, so I'm pretty big, but I understand where you're coming from. Like you do, everybody is like, I've had conversations with like health coaches before mm -hmm. health professionals before and healthy looks different for everybody. Right. Yeah. But so for healthy for you was this, was this case, right? Well, and the thing is, is mental it's, not health and things like that. it's not necessarily about the poundage. It was, I just felt so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, sluggish the, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, and, and, um, I had a, I had a health coach put it like this when I interviewed him once, he was like the, the scale is a very poor indicator of health. Yeah, no, but totally. yeah, but when you're eating right and your mind is right, like totally, that totally makes sense. Um, I love that though. Cause you have to be, you have to be there. So you, you mentioned one thing, um, you know, I want to talk about a few things, uh, you sure. know, I want to talk about, you know, this idea of, trust another big buzzword right i think like simon mm -hmm. sinek brought that out a few years ago with his like start with why and leaders eat last kind of thing um and then obviously i want to get into like how you uh like content creation because that sure. kind of goes in with like confidence but would love to hear your thoughts on like you know you mentioned how to build self-trust and so trust is such a big word it really is. <laughs> it's a deep, you know, it's just deep. It's like, yeah. you can't walk up to somebody like Simon Sinek said that, right? Like you can't walk up to somebody on the street and say, Hey, like, trust me. It's like, that's not how this works. Right. But then you hear other people who are like, I give my trust until somebody tells me until somebody proves me otherwise. And it's like, you have two extremes where it's like, you trust everybody and you trust no one. And then Jordan Peterson talks about like, you know, like if you're cynical and nihilistic, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't work for you. You know, that doesn't work generally in the long term. It's not sustainable. But then if you're, if you're too trusting and naive, right. You, you know, that doesn't, that's not sustainable either. So it takes courage to be trusting, yeah. but you have to do it right. You know what I mean? And so it's just, these are all the thoughts going through my head when some sure. people drive like, but you know, what, what, where, where are you at with that? Yeah. So I think there's, we brought up self-trust so mm -hmm. we could talk corporate trust and that's a whole level sure. of like psychological safety and things like that. Sure. But when you're looking at okay. trusting yourself, I love that you brought up that you can be cynical. And like, if you're looking at somebody on the street and you're like, I'm not going to trust you right away. Like yeah. that's obvious, right. but how many times, and this is the, like the money question here, how many times have you not trusted yourself and you know yourself better than anybody? Yeah. That's right? a tough one. Yeah. That's are you so treat, tough. are you treating yourself like you're somebody on the street or are you treating yourself <laughs> like you're someone that you can trust? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a tough one. Self-trust is tough. Like, no, especially is. for entrepreneurs, right? Like, uh, I had a big one when I started my podcasting, uh, production company mm -hmm. and I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I have an accounting degree and an MBA in finance. I have no clue. I do not know videography. I don't know. You know what I mean? But like, I knew that I was good at what I did, but I, mm -hmm. but it's just, but I did go through like a week where I was like, dude, I can't do this. 
So there's a couple of components here. One, there's a level of trust in yourself that you have, and this is so cliche, but so true, right? (laughs) You have survived every day that you are, you've lived. Yeah. Right. And so you can trust yourself to survive. That's like, like, that is the baseline. You can trust mm. yourself to survive but Done I like every day that, of your though. life. But <laughs> yeah. I like that though. Cause that, that answers the question of like, what would you do if you couldn't fail? If you knew you couldn't fail? Yeah. Technically you never well, have. Shoot. Yeah, exactly. Well, shoot, man. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> I maybe guess if you've, that's, yeah. let's tie this back. Maybe yeah. you've lost a few times, Sure. but you haven't failed because you're not mm. dead. Right? You have lived, <laughs> you have survived every day you've been alive and you're here today. Shoot. So that's like, yeah, that's the baseline of self trust is just an understanding that, like, I'm actually pretty, like, as a human being in this universe, the fact that I'm here and I'm still here every single day, like, that's amazing. Yeah. You, that kind of goes into, um, one of my hot takes in life. So, like, everybody, you know, you scroll on LinkedIn, you go into the hustle culture, inevitably, you see someone post about their why, right? And Mm -hmm. someone's why is usually their family. I post a picture of their kids, post a picture of their wife. And I've ne- that's never resonated with me. And I'll tell you why. Because my family will always be, like family is always there. Like if I lost everything today, my wife and kids would still be there. Mm-hmm. Right? And so for me, it's like, that's, that kind of ties into your point, which is like, well, my family and kids will be there. It's not going to kill me. Well, let's roll then. We'll figure yeah. it out. We'll figure out the rest later. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have, I have very personal opinions on, like putting, saying your family is your why, because what you're doing yeah, is you're giving away your personal power, right? Sure. Cause let's I mean, say, I don't, let's, yeah, go ahead. Let's say that you say that your family is everything. And in mm-hmm. the worst case scenario, your wife says, you know what? I want a divorce and I'm actually moving across the country and I'm taking yeah. the kids. Okay. Sure. That can sure. feel like you've lost your family. And if your family is your sole purpose right. for everything that you do, now you don't have an existence, but sure. if your personal why is attached to you as a person, for instance, mine is my personal reason why I do everything is that I believe I'm here to learn and to grow and then to make an impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm here to live life. I'm here to learn. I'm here to grow. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. And doesn't matter what happens to me. I'm not saying that should be everybody's why, but it doesn't matter what happens to me. I have that why regardless mm. of the circumstance and the situation. So yeah. That, I mean, that's why, a good point too. Like it's not yeah. an outside source. I'm not giving away my power. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Okay, I get what you're saying now. Yep, yeah, I get it. But what it like also tied comes to back external. To, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like yep. if you're if you're that's if you're saying the reason point. I do everything, the reason I do everything is for somebody else. Well, if that somebody else walks out, then what? <laughs> that's true, though. I mean, that's a good point because, um, again, I just bring up philosophy. So, like, one of my hot takes in life is like in sales. I guess I shouldn't say life, but like in sales is, Mm -hmm. well, I guess life too. I guess I'm working this out as I'm talking. Right. Um, but like for me, it's philosophy over psychology and I'm a sales guy, uh, and, and a new marketing guy. So that sounds super counterintuitive, like, because we're all about, you know, every sales book and marketing book is like psychology, psychology, psychology. No, I agree a thousand with you, like a thousand percent with you. I can see where you're going. This is great. Yeah, Because philosophy keeps you in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Cause psychology only goes so far. Like you can do, this is what I teach people. Like you can do everything right in sales. You can follow the process hundred percent, say exactly what you need to say. And they'll still tell you, no, I've had it. I've had it a million times. We've been right there on budget. We've been right there on time. We've been right there with the right people. Mm-hmm. Right. We got in the door at the right time. And they were like, now nah, we're good. Oh my gosh. What happened? Nothing. We're good. We don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Could have been indigestion. Could have been you. Doesn't matter. Like, but that happens. Right. And, and I've seen so many good salespeople get derailed because the psychology didn't work because like at the end of the day, we're people right? yep. <laughs> like, and like, we don't follow rules like consistently, right. Like habits and stuff, but sh- whatever, but like, so what are you going to do? Like, my thing is like philosophy, right? Like control what you can control. Mm-hmm. you know, focus on, focus on inputs, not outputs. You'll be fine. Right. What I love about that too, is that I see philosophy as the, uh, there's a core component of it is your personal philosophy is a deep reflection of your personal values. 
Mm, yeah. Right. That, yeah, and your philosophy is. can shape your values and who you are. So when we cycle back here to self-trust and confidence, mm -hmm. a knowing of who you are, your values, what you stand for, right. Going back to also like the, why, like, why are you mm -hmm. here? What do you stand for? The philosophy of your life. Mm -hmm. When you can step up and show up in that way, step into and show up in that way. Mm -hmm. That's when things come together. Yeah. When you try to do the hacks, the systems and the programs that yeah. aren't, that are like, do this, do this, do like exactly what you said. It's not yeah. going to work a hundred percent of the time because you're yeah, relying, you're relying on assuming that everybody is the same and they are not. And well, I, yeah. and I say that in every regard, right? Like yeah. I can give you a formula. That's why I do high level formulas. And then it's like, when mm -hmm. we work together, we'll figure that out for you, but it's like, okay, take the action. Right feel qualified, feel capable, feel confident. It's not saying yeah. take this action, take this action, take this action. And yay, you're and confident. it'll work. It'll work hundred percent. Yeah. No, we can't play that game. And I, but I sure. love that you brought up philosophy because the philosophy is how you can step into your true self and your philosophy yeah. can shift and grow as you do, but it's going to remain pretty sure. standard. Sure. Whereas psychology is if you're not if psychology for yourself is one thing, understanding sure. how you function, all that kind of stuff. Great psychology for other people is just a form of manipulation. Well, that, you know, manipulation and it's just like, I don't know. It's just, you, you can use it for sure. But, but I've just seen people go too far down the psychology. Like, I don't know. One time I said this philosophy over sales and someone was like, have you even read this book? And I was like, of course, dude, like we've all read the book, but that's, and that's all important. Like, okay. Like, yes, reciprocity, but these things for, for psychology, for me, they change though. Like when I learned about psychology, I went, I went way too deep and, you know, you just think everything's going to work and you're like, I got this. Right. But mm -hmm. when I, when I mixed in the philosophy, I learned that the psychology for me, like, like the real psychology was like just empathy. Like that's the psychology of sales for me is like empathy. It's like treat people like humans, give a shit about someone else besides yourself mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and you'll be happier and you'll get more done. Right. It's like this counterintuitive, like like stop focusing on outputs, start focusing on inputs. You'll get more outputs, right? Like the, the paradox of power and the paradox of control, right? Mm -hmm. Like the more you give, the, the more you get. And uh, because it's true, like if you don't have like the empathy behind it, if you don't have the philosophy behind it at that point, yeah, if psychology is manipulation. And that, and the problem with that is people can smell it. Yep. 100%. They can taste it. You know, they're like, this isn't good. <laughs> Yep. Like when I, when I'm in, like, I'm a sales guy, so I, I, you know, I'll go buy things and I'm pretty lenient because I know that sales is a hard gig. Right. So I'll give people the benefit of the doubt a lot, but you know, when they start like going through the spiel, I'm like, Hey bro, you don't need to do Just that talk to me. me. Like I'm a real person. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't need to do that with me. <laughs> We're here, bro. It's all good. <laughs> I don't want to yep. play games, you know, cause I used to love that. Like when I was in, um, when this all changed for me, I'll tell you a quick story and then I'll let you kind of get, get with your thoughts. But when I, when I was, um, when I was in sales, like, I, I mean, I'm still in sales now, but when I was in more transactional sales, people would be like, you know, let's not play games. And I'd be like, okay, great. Thank goodness. Cause I didn't want to play it either. And then I would start like talking to them like normally, like, Hey, okay. So what are you looking for? And all these things. Cause like, you know, you want to get to know somebody and you want to get to know what they mm -hmm. need. They'd be like, Hey, I don't want to play games. And I was like, okay, well then, or like, or like, they'd be like, we we go through this whole thing and I tell them and I'd be like, ah, they were like, I knew you were going to do this. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, it's not, if it's not a game, you know, if I'm not playing games, like it was just crazy how cynical people are because of this whole psychology thing, right? They would just think you just naturally default to these things. And it's just wild. Well, what I see too is with like, cause my core audience is yeah. coaches, right? Sure. And what I primarily see is that my audience gets so wrapped up in feeling like they have to do it right. And like, okay, well, here's this tip and this trick. And it's the psychology mm -hmm. of things that they get so wrapped up in it that it feels like it has to be perfect. They take two hours to write a single social media post and, <laughs> and then yeah. it gets no traction. Well, yeah, and it's because they're so wrapped up in all of these things. And so when we talk about confidence, what it really mm -hmm. is, is confidence to be yourself know and trust that that's going to attract the right audience and that is going to want to work with you. And if you can marketing and sales, in my opinion, 
bad name rap, right? If we get to nomenclature <laughs> yeah. though, like let's actually call it what it is. It's relationship building. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Marketing yeah. is building a relationship. So you get to know me, you get to like me, you get to trust me, hopefully, right? right and then right. sales is, hey, let's take this relationship to, you know, kind of a back and forth. Let's see how we can yeah. help each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, and when you sales get is that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I mean, sales, but that's why also like I learned how to be confident really fast because what my confidence actually came from in sales was the counterintuitive mm -hmm. approach that like, I don't need to sell everybody. Like when I, when I was able to say no, my confidence went through the roof. I like love saying that. no, saying no is when my confidence went through the, cause like, I don't need this. Yep. Like, it's also an integrity play, which if we go yeah. back to the philosophy, I would bet right. money that one of your values is honesty, trust, or integrity. One of those yeah. three. Yeah. And now you can say no and be like, this isn't a good fit for this person. I'm not so desperate for the sale that I'm trying to manipulate them to get this. Right. Instead, I'm in my integrity and I'm serving them by saying, this isn't the right thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people trust you more. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've had people, I, I've had both ends. Right. But, but the thing for this, right. Is like, again, so there's a saying in, in stoicism that goes, uh, some bonum. And the, the philosophy behind that phrase is, is, is it means the highest good in Latin mm. and the highest good is doing the right thing for the right reason, no matter what. Right getting to that place is really hard. It was hard yeah. for me. I mean, I'm not perfect. <laughs> Listen, I'm the, I'm the opposite of this phrase, but I try really hard to like, you know, like give and not expect anything because yeah. that's what, yeah. Th so that's one of my, so that's one of my values is like the high, like just doing the right thing because it's the right reason. So yeah. Integrity, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Because yeah, it doesn't absolutely. matter. Like you can't control that stuff. Like again, you can do everything right and lose. So what do you, yeah. I mean, does you quit the game at that point? No, you just no take it, keep going. <laughs> right. Like, well, and that's, and um, one, like, let's, let's stick with the sales model for a second here. Mm -hmm. One no is not the end of the world. And it doesn't yeah. mean that you're bad at what you do. It just means right. that Maybe you didn't show up in a way that makes the most sense and you can try again tomorrow or yeah. whatever that is, but it's not right. One no is bound to happen. I mean, look, you look at, <laughs> you look at the best closers sure. in the world. Like you look at these people that sell from stage and they have hundreds of thousands of people in the audience and their closing rate is still 15%. And that's huge. And that's a good, well, then that's good though. Yeah. Right. Like, oh yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, but it's, that's great. It's, fu dude. it's funny. I read, oh gosh, what was the book? So I'm a big book person. I have a book oh, club. Oh, me too. Let's do and it. Oh, what? Just, you have a book club? I need to be involved. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll talk about it after. Yeah, all right. Deal. Um, we're reading Quiet right now, which is really good. But oh, oh we read Limitless yesterday, or not yesterday, last month. Okay. We read Limitless by Jim Quick. And in it, he's talking about like the restrictions we put on our on our brains. Right. And mm -hmm. so he shares a story about this girl who went to a, a sales class to sell from stage. And the teacher had said, I believe the number was 85%. Like if you use this system that here, I'm going to teach you and then you add your own, <laughs> right. You add your own though. So make it yours. Mm -hmm. Uh, you will have a closed rate of 85%. So she <laughs> does it. She acts on it and she gets to 75%. Okay. Which is astronomical, right? Yeah. That's almost unreal. Uh, super unreal. So she goes a year later, she ends up seeing the coach again. And she goes, I just have to ask you, how do I get that last 10%? I'm doing everything that you say. I have a 75% close rate. And he goes, what? She goes, yeah, I have a 75% close rate. You said this could get me to 85%. He goes, no, no, no. I said 25. Uh, <laughs> and she was like, what? Right. And so he was shocked. But the point of it was, is that your brain, if you don't put the limit of this and she, so she's thinking, sure. I got to hit 85. Well, 75's sure. 50 more than 25, which is what he said you could get with it, but she dismissed yeah. her. Right. And so yeah, what I'm getting to is that it doesn't matter how many no's you hear. If you can adjust and pivot, learn and grow right. and go again, you're going to get better. Yeah. You don't limit yourself by saying, oh, I had what one person said, no, that means that I'm not, yeah. what do I do? I am a terrible person, whatever it is. Right, and that's where it comes right. back to the confidence and the self-trust. What I yeah. like to do is I, a good example here is I quit my corporate job, right? Went mm -hmm. full-time in my business. I was scared to death. And 
one of the things I had to do was write down all the good, th- all the things I'm good at. Yeah. Right. And that's tangible and intangible. So hard skill, soft skill, right? So things that I'm good at, I can pretty decent Excel sheets, right? Like you can <laughs> list out those. Things and then there's like the intangible, the soft skills. I'm good at emotional intelligence. I'm good at public speaking. Mm-hmm. I'm good at coaching. I'm good at leadership, like whatever those things. I did a mm-hmm. huge list. And then anytime something came up, I could look at that list and go, actually, no, I'm pretty good at these things. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to do this. I used to way back in the day. Uh, I had to ask a friend one time, what are the three things that like you admire about me or that I'm good at? Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't see it for myself. And that friend was like, oh, I love that you have this. I love that you had it. And I was like, cool, write that down on the sheet, right? (laughs) So it's been an ongoing sheet for me, but I had to rebuild it to be able to say, do I trust myself? Do I have the skills? Do I have the capability to be able to quit this corporate world, go full-time in my job? Like, do I have the confidence in myself? Ultimately, Mm -hmm. the trust Mm -hmm. in myself to do it. And by having that list, it's like a list of successes, right? You're Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm actually good at this. I'm good at this. So when you do get that, no, look at that list on the side of your computer and be like, no, that was one. No, maybe I didn't share that. I can help them like this enough. Um, maybe next time I'll do an adjustment this way, but that's going to depend on the relationship and the conversation and what's a good fit for them. Mm -hmm. And you keep going eventually you're going to get really good, (laughs) right? You just take action. You're going to feel qualified. You're going to feel capable. And then the confidence will come. And then you're like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Two thoughts while you were talking. The first one was the guys who say, well, and, and it's funny that he went from 85 and he said 25, right? That would be more realistic. I was going to say, like when I teach salespeople, I'm like, look, if somebody comes up to you and, and they say something wild, like a good closing rate, like an average closing rate throughout most industries is 20%. Like if you can close two or three out of 10 people, like that's really good for the most part. Some industries are lower, some industries are higher, it depends on the ticket size. But like, I always tell people like, if somebody comes up to you and they say, if you use my thing, you'll close at 80% or 100% guaranteed. I'm like, run dude. Cause that's, yeah. it just doesn't like, I don't, it's just not gonna work. And, and it might work, but like the fact that he said 25 is perfect. Like, that's what I tell people. I'm like, if you go through my program, I'll, I'll bump your percentage up to where it needs to be around 20, 20, 30%. Mm-hmm. And people go, well, that's not enough. And I go, okay, then I'm not the guy. <laughs> See, and that's an incredible go, close rate. Yeah. I go, yeah. It's, yeah. It's great. It's like, cool. Um, and then the second thing was about the self-awareness that comes mm-hmm. with self-trust. Sad guru said that your nose is right. Ab- that even though your nose is right above your mouth, somebody else has to tell you that you have bad breath and to gain the self-awareness that, that uh, you can tell if you have bad breath, means that you've reached a certain point of enlightenment almost. Right. Interesting. Now I'm going to be like, be walking around with my hand over. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's, but it's true. Like, but it's yeah. true. Like, I mean, I've had it. I mean, I'm not perfect. Right. I've been, I've been there. <laughs> no, somebody's please. like, bro. So I've had people go to bro. You need to go brush your teeth or get a mint. Right. I'm like, oh yeah. All right, dude. Cool. But that, that's also a different skill. Right. That, but like, again, it's just like having the self-awareness to just be like, all right, cool. You know, I, I know where I'm, I'm good at. I know what I can do. But, yeah. but I, but I love it. And, and uh, it's just so funny how that all, how that all plays out because it, it's, it's true. So, well, that's, well, that's great. I know we're coming up on time. You've been more than generous with your knowledge and your time and your information, Taylor, if somebody wants to get involved with your coaching or, you, you know, your marketing consulting services, whatever that is, how do they get a hold of you? Where can they follow you? All that good stuff. Yeah. So if you go to taylorproctor.com, that's T A Y L O R P R O C T O R dot com. Uh, there is a way to contact me. There's links to all my socials, and uh, there is also information about my programs. And if it's consulting from a small business or medium business or startup, I guess I should say, perspective, um, that's something. Just send me a contact, and it's uh, on a case by case basis. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Taylor. It was a pleasure. Thank you.